don't call me up. Call me up. Please don't call me up. I'm a no. Please don't call me up. We go up and up and up Please don't call me up. Please don't call me up. All right, what it do, everybody? It's your boy LOG. We live. We got a special guest in the building. The homie Chance. What's good, y'all? How y'all doing? What's good, love? All right. Hell yeah. It's got a little button on the front of it, so if you need to cough or anything, you can. that's like your mute, unmute. Oh, but uh. So, <laughs> all right, so uh, we were kind of talking a little before mm. getting into some of what we were going to talk about and just catching up and stuff, yeah. but uh, I guess to start it off, we both, uh, I've talked about it a couple times already, but we were both at South by Southwest. Uh, you were working it most of the time, mm -hmm. right? So what was that like for you? Like, Oh, man, it was a beautiful experience, man. Um so like how I got in was through volunteering. So uh, that was honestly it was great, man. There was a lot of things that I got to see, a lot of people I got to meet, um, and like I was there from I want to say like ten o'clock that whole week until like three in the morning, and like maybe getting home in between like three thirty and four. But uh, it was it was worth it. I met a lot of amazing people, a lot of amazing artists a lot of amazing business people and it was just so crazy like i felt so comfortable and everyone was just talking to each other and but it just it didn't feel unreal it felt right like we're, we're all supposed to be there like i i think maybe it's a learning thing hmm. and wh so what were you doing there shoot so like there was like different events and stuff you could go to. There were some artists that you could see that came on a different time or like, I know this, one of the most memorable moments that I had was going to the Sydney Sweeney seminar. That was wild and Sydney Sweeney was there. And I actually got to like see her talk about like a little bit how she grew up and what inspired her and like her thought process on the things that she's into and the things that she does in which like man like truly intelligent like like i knew she was intelligent from before but like like hearing like how she articulates and answers questions and like the quickness with it like it's just it's just truly genuine but like she has an understanding that is excellent she she has an excellent understanding of things and like keep it real i don't know what the hell i was doing there <laughs> 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 that as that like one of those days can't remember what day it was but i got up late and i was like fuck and the thing i wanted to go to was like off so i was like okay well i just went to my parking spot and i wanted to practice my guitar so i was just practicing my guitar just outside with no nothing plugged in just practicing it but i have like headphones on and i'm listening to like music and i don't know sometimes i just want to like rock out even though i don't know what i'm playing yeah you know and i and i can't hear it because my headphones on but like you know i'm just trying to get used to the the strumming because once i get the strumming down and my placement is cool then i don't have to look and i can do i can dance mm. while i'm rocking yeah but i have to get used to like the motion uh and then like i, I got tired of that checked my phone and saw that she was going to be at the seminar and i was like wow and who is it again sydney sweeney i don't even know who, who is that <laughs> <laughs> sydney sweeney um she is an actress she's a director she so she's more like i movies. believe she has her own company now do what i believe she she started her own company or yeah yeah i think so I what think was like is. impressing you the most about what she was saying like um oh man okay i remember her saying something about how she was when she was younger and like knowing what she wanted to do by she always called herself like writing scripts okay she'd write scripts and like 
act different parts and I also believe that she said Oh, okay. All right, all right. She also said this. She was like, There is something that you wanted to go for. Do it with every part of you. Because okay. it is every part of you. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't think that's like exactly what she said, but that's what I got from what she told us about her journey to where she was today and the people that helped her. And um, it was just incredible. Like yeah. it, it really takes a village. Like you, you have to have a support system. Like, I don't think like there's anyone in this world that like, you can't do things alone. Like, yeah. Like there's a certain extent, but you're gonna, I mean, we as humans need each other period. Yeah. Like period. And, and, anyway in everything like somebody's got to eat those fucking berries to see if they're poisonous or not mm. all right because like if if we all eat at the same time we all might die then you know yeah <laughs> like hey <laughs> pick the short straw nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that's how it be like <laughs> so so at south by you were like uh like what like oh uh, that wasn't even like okay that was part of the best part okay so i sat by my homeboy right well he not my homeboy but we met and uh he's a producer i I can't remember his name at the moment but i remember we were both like why are we here and i was like i don't know man like i just looked at my phone and i looked at everything else and this is the only one that popped up and he was like all right, well. No, 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 but like, what, like, what were you? You were working South by, but like, what were you actually doing there? Like, what? Oh, were you, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was volunteering. I was volunteering at the chess club. Okay. So like, it was basically like we were doing stage crew. So like, if the bands coming in needed like gear to be moved and whatnot, that's what we did. Oh, they were just helping. Okay, okay. Yeah, and that was like from like six to six to close. Yeah okay okay and then in your free time you were checking out shit in the free time yes okay if i could be there i was there you know what i'm saying just talking to people meeting people uh experiencing different things and just seeing kind of what my internal compass told me to go Mm. so i was just following that the whole time okay uh and i guess you walking in we kind of jumped into the first question kind of threw mm-hmm. my intro off but and it's been a while since i filmed the episode but i think this is officially going to be episode 16 uh hey, episode 16 you know what's up uh oh, and uh we're just gonna get into chance is an artist he goes by uh fake smiles so we're gonna get into that and that's why i kind of I kind of jumped the gun, and as I said, we were kind of talking and chilling before, so that kind of yeah, <laughs> got the conversation going. But uh, I kind of want to cover today, you know, just uh, get his background as an artist and all that, and then kind of get his perspective on uh, some things after, you know, how hip-hop is going and some other stuff. So, uh, but yeah, we, we just kind of jumped in. I went to South By. Y'all kind of know I covered a little bit of it. Uh, but that was my first year. I was, like, pretty overwhelmed. But you've been around it more you know, more years, more frequently. And I was there one day, you were there more mm-hmm. time. And so I just kind of wanted to like get your, like, is there anything else you wanted to say about the festival as a whole or like what your ex- like experiences on it or? Um, yeah. I mean, okay. I know there's a lot of shit going on. A lot of yeah, shit. Yeah. I, I'd but... say probably like back to that Sydney Sweeney thing. So okay. like, cause like, uh, I also want to act and okay. get into all that stuff. I've had some photo shoots done and still going to have some more to be done. And, uh, and try to get into that pool because like like it's just an artist kind of thing you just kind of you have to do a little bit of everything and see what something you want to try yeah and um so like it was that and then she said a whole bunch of other stuff that was just very compelling and it was really inspiring right so I was just like, damn, like I, I really, I really learned a lot from it, you know, and like I only know her from Euphoria, mm. you know. I, I haven't seen some of her other work because I've been in that uh, mind space. I'm, t- I'm not trying to get a uh, what's it called. You don't want to have their uh, material like rub off on you too much. 
yeah because i have very good memory so like i'm i'm just trying to uh make sure that my in the way i do things and like my sound is like cultivated from purely like the things that influence me as a kid like of course there's like the later stuff that influences me as well i'm just trying to find my like base you know what i'm saying my base saying level <laughs> yeah so to speak but so my homie he looked it up and said dude do you know who comes in this room next because we were in the front row we was in the front row okay. for for city suite right like we was like i want to say like maybe a row or two back but we was there Def Jam. Def okay. Jam was next in that room. And we looked at each other and said, yeah, we in the front. Yeah, Def Jam's a damn big name. Mm -hmm. Chuck D, Lady London. They were there. Uh, along with the a and R. I can't remember his name at the moment. I believe Sides. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, South by is like a huge place to like just make connections, meet people, mm -hmm. network like crazy. Yeah. And you're busy the whole time you're there. Man, yes. Oh my gosh. And hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real. Yeah. And just all that energy is just gone. Yeah, Joey told me, uh, our mutual friend, Joey, uh, shout out Joey Flex, he told me, like, he was like, you should take uh, chips and snacks to South By, and I, at first I was like, nah, and then I was like, yeah, everyone there would not, like, hate on, like, a little bag of chips to snack on, like, mm -hmm. everyone's, like, uh, just going and going and going. Uh, I sent you that link that I told you about. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so check out that, uh, you can check that out and see, um... Oh, okay, but yeah, yeah. So, just getting into like some super basic questions for fans of yours and people that like, watch this and check this out. Kind of your first time on the show. We're just getting into, like yeah. super basic shit. My um, first podcast I ever done too, by the way. Nice, so, hey. dope, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, that's what we're here for—to give the people a voice and fucking you know make connections and talk about sh stuff that's prevalent, promote shit, and give our take and opinion on shit. Um, right. So. You're based out of Austin now, but is that where you grew up and where you've always been, or did you... Oh, no. Nah. So, originally, so I was born in Dallas, but I okay. went to school in Irving. So, um, it's a small town, and the area that I stayed in is called Bear Creek. And uh, so, I I grew up... I grew up there, but so is that, is that like a, is that pretty close to Dallas and Irving? Is like yeah, like the city yeah. still, or so is it pretty within, much like a yeah, it's small, within Dallas County. Yeah. It seems like a big city then still. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, no, yeah, Dallas, yeah, Dallas is definitely big. I say Austin is a lot bigger. So in your town, you're you're right in the city. You're not like out in the country at all, uh, or are you a little bit? I, I'm a little bit, a little bit on the okay. Oscars, like just to the part where it's like okay, settle yeah. down a little bit. Yeah, okay. and like you'll you'll see like a nice neighborhood like out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you just came from the trailer park. Okay, then, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of everything blended. Yeah, I was okay. like, oh, but you shit. can get to Dallas in like thirty minutes. Uh huh. Maybe yeah. something like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like thirty cool, minutes, cool. and it's it's kind of crazy because when I started driving, like I rarely like drove to Dallas, so like I don't even like I don't know my way. I don't okay. know my way around Dallas. I know yeah. Harry Highs, <laughs> 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 but uh, everything else, I don't know. Yeah. So when did you move to down to Austin? Let's see, so Austin itself, I moved to Austin after. Let's see, I want to say two years after I graduated from Texas State. Okay. When did you, so, well, okay. So, when did you come down from, I guess, what year did you come from Dallas to San Marcos and Texas State? Like, oh, uh, 2016. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's crazy. Shit, that's eight years ago now. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. So... <laughs> So, uh, 2016, you came down to Central Texas, uh -huh. and uh, so that was okay. Uh, and that you, so you were probably about 18. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and um, did you like? Did you notice any big differences between like Dallas and the Central, like San Marcos, Austin area? Yeah. Or Shit. a lot of big differences. Do, do um, you like it? Did you like it back home better, but down here better? I mean, like home. Home will always be home mm -hmm. and like essentially 
where the base of my being is my essential street smarts that I you grew up and learned the world and shit. Yeah, yeah. So like it will always be that. Like there's nothing that can replace it. But uh, Sam Marcus is um very, very diverse. Diverse in a sense of like there's not really any like sections of people we're all together mm. like you're gonna see someone from somewhere doing something yeah all be they just all blended together yeah. kind of and um which i definitely appreciate because uh it i feel like it helps people grow to know things from a different side point and perspective you know from a different background a different culture a different way of thinking a different way of seeing things a different way of talking etiquette there's just so many differentialities into which can help other people conquer the things within themselves because like every culture has what they what i call like priority versus not as much as priority and a sense of their values mm. but either or like having anything at the top you know what i'm saying it's kind of um you know you'll be working for it forever so mm. it's I'd say it's about like finding a balance and whatnot, but yeah, this some good shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nice. That's nice. So you moved down here. You you liked it enough to stay. Um, yeah. um and when did you start? This is kind of I guess flowing into another question. Let me make sure I don't like skip over anything. Uh, yeah, I guess this kind of flows into the next question of like, when did you? Did you moving down here and staying down here kind of have to do with you starting to take music more serious? Or not really, yeah, you already so, kind of settled down here and then that kind of happened a little later. So, okay, in a way, I want to say I was uh, I was moving blind. One thing I knew for sure was that I was supposed to go to Texas State. Mm. All right. So when I came down here, this was my chance to find out who I was because I knew the things that I enjoyed. Just moving home and yeah, doing your own thing. right, yeah, because yeah. I because now I don't have any um any other immediate influence, and like back home, like it was really like my mom and my grandmother, and my uncle. Of course, families always have yeah, but yeah. And so uh, and like that was a bit like. I mean, I I love them so much. Like those those are my people, and there is always like it. The mental toughness that it gave me is really what made me feel ready to see what I could do. Because there are some things I couldn't say out loud, mm. and I always wondered why can I say it out loud? Why am I scared to say out loud that I want to do something? Yeah, you know. And I just knew that I I had to be away, and. I had to find myself in other people to understand myself more. Hmm. And that's why I took it. So anytime anyone told me a story about them or anything, like I would learn from it. I would learn from it. So like if some kind of situation like that arise, I'd know how to deal with it. Hmm. And like, that was enough for me. Like I didn't have to go snoop and be like, Oh, you know, maybe I won't hope it. Fuck that. Happened to that nigga. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Oh, it happened to him. I have it to be. I will make sure I move this, this, that. You know, mm. you know. Here you go. So, at what point did you really take an interest to in music? Mm. Okay, when you say really take a take an interest, are you talking like um, like even back in the day? Because I I fell in love with hip hop when I was introduced to it when I was like seventeen or eighteen. But up mm -hmm. to that point my dad was like pretty strict on me and he didn't allow me to listen to that shit. And so mm -hmm. all he would listen to is country music. And like most of it, I was just like, thought was okay. But like, even back then there's a few songs. And I was like, damn, this song is like good. I like this song. Mm -hmm. And like talking to other people, like for instance, my grandpa, he don't care about music. Like he don't, he never listened to it on his own. and doesn't care. But like for me to have a favorite song, even out of the few I was even listening to, it's like, obviously I like, when did you notice that? Like, okay, I like this song. I have a favorite song. I, shit like even mm -hmm. little shit like that where you say I, I oh, like music okay. like, I, I I see what you mean okay all right, all right I got you I got you all right so it's like basically like my like like my coming into musical consciousness moment yeah okay. yeah man um 
All right. I'm going to say a plethora of things until, okay. I mean, I know it's hard to like pinpoint, but. Well, okay. All right. All right. I'll tell you of, I'll tell you of two. All right. I'll tell you of two. And because these are the first things that came to mind. Okay. I know when I was young, young, something about Usher. These are my confessions. Uh, it's great. These are my conf like I was crazy about yeah. that, right? I want to say like I remember hearing that shit too, and it was just like something about the like how it's just good, even though we didn't relate to what he was talking about. Maybe yeah, like, like, like kids, I don't like, like I don't know anything about that. I'm a kid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying kids, like, but like something about yeah, that song, so good, how he did like it, and like voice and everything. Yeah, yeah, like all that stuff was just uh really like inspiring, you know. And then I had some. There were some traumatic things that I had went through, so I kind of like deviated away from that. But then again, I was also a kid, so like I couldn't even tell you like what I was doing because mm -hmm. like I'm like I don't exactly remember. But I know I started feeling disconnected. Mm -hmm. Like I like the music that I was listening to, I wasn't um I couldn't not necessarily feel it in a sense of the person's performance or how they like say their stuff but in a sense of like the way i was feeling was a lot deeper and darker but i didn't have the mind at the time to go out and find the deeper and darker music i had to like live life and discover it right right so like so like now i, I would clarify this as like my coming in the musical consciousness moment all right in sixth grade <laughs> like i mean of course like like i listened to like little wayne like i'm i really liked him like i was really into uh who else was back from that time honestly i think dang yeah i think for a moment like little wayne really like took over for me ones. like it yeah. Was, yeah it was it was that until like um drake cole kendrick um Immortal Technique. Oh yeah, that was that was one for sure. But I I would say like as a kid, the one that really like where I went like obsessed, like got the album and like like everything else. Still haven't seen them in concert. Trying to catch them in concert. But Evanescence. So like I was in sixth grade, and um, this girl like you know how sometimes like you turn on your laptop and you like play music and it plays out loud and then like you realize that like oh I didn't plug in my headphone. Yeah. I heard the song and it was like da 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 and then she plugged it back in and I was like, Hey, what was that? And she was like, Oh, this is Evanescence and I was like, Evanescence? I was like, Who what is that? She was like, Oh, it's this like band, it's like they're really cool, it's like dark and da 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 and I was like, Really? <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. So like I I asked her what song and it was called uh, I Must Be Dreaming or Bleeding. I, I can't remember. Hmm. But I started listening to that. And it was like, we all live. We all die. But that does not begin to justify you. It's not what it seems. And this was in sixth grade? Sixth grade. Why were you feeling so dark, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you this. Was it like? At birth, you know what I'm saying? The cord was wrapped around my neck and my eye. That's why I have a lazy eye. Really? Yeah, so like. Do you think that was symbolic for something or? Well. I looked it up. So in some cultures, the meaning of that is spiritual suicide. When you made a decision to come and then you change your mind because you realize, oh, what I desired is going to be a lot from the start. And I feel as if in my last life, I didn't like have God and it was a lot in mm. that. So, but I came. Yeah, and, so this world's a lot. Yeah, and and I came through, but there's no like sense that and like 
You feel like you just knew that early on, maybe. I mean, like even as a kid, like I used to, I used to walk around when I was by myself, and I would just be so irritated. And I just say to myself, "Why did I come back?" Yeah. Why did I come back? And I used to think like, <laughs> I used to think like people were like really, really stupid because like I didn't understand why they would get so angry about not necessarily like being called out about stuff, but not like believing the truth when it's right in front of them. Mm. You know, I was able to always see it as a kid, but like, yeah. because I was a kid, I was never given credit or respect to where like, they would actually listen. They say, Oh, you're being smart. If I'm being smart, does that mean I'm right? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, I don't know if that's a shrewd way of yeah. thinking. It's not exactly like in that nature, you know, but yeah, but I've been through just, I mean, like everyone, like everyone's been through a lot, you know, right. like one way or but another. But it can be difficult for people when they're like ahead of their time or they're thinking a little bit ahead in certain ways and yeah. other, everyone around them doesn't think that way. It can be hard. It can lead to like, you know, it can be hard. Yeah, it so. can lead to turmoil. Like, yeah. y'all be kind to yourself. Please. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We're going to make mistakes. We don't know what the hell is going on. And ultimately, we aren't in control. We're in control as much as we have control at we have when we have it but once it's out of it that's yeah. it like it's out of it and we have to like make do with whatever the outcome is but be kind to yourself bro be kind to yourself don't hate don't hate on nobody mm. we all want to win we can win together we all need each other we can all win this whole entire world but we just all have to be together and not on our I don't know Kumbaya, Care Bear type shit, Strawberry Shortcake, you know what I'm saying? Not on none of that. But on some, just, hey, these are the concerns. These are the problems. How can we all fix this and put the puzzle pieces together so we can all be pretty? <laughs> and then that's it. And they be killing niggas for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That shit crazy, man. But so okay, so early on you're hearing some of the stuff you like, mm -hmm. and then you mentioned a little bit ago you got into like Kendrick and Cole and stuff. But was it those guys, or was it maybe somebody else that made you like? When did you start? Um, I guess when did you start to kind of mess around with rapping? Oh, and okay. and who is the person like who when? Oh, Look, I see what you mean. Damn. I when gotta, did it kind of translate think. into, like, actually... Because, like, when I started fucking around and, and trying to rap, I was emulating, like, some of the people I was the biggest fans of, like, Chameleon and Zero, yeah. even though I wasn't close to them. Like, that's who I was... That's who I was letting rub off on my style. So, like, who... How? When did it kind of... Did it work like that for you, or was it, like... When did you kind of start messing around with your okay, craft? And so, like, like, dang. Okay, that's taking it back. Okay, um... I have a confession. <laughs> I am a lover boy. I've <laughs> always been. I started writing poems about these girls that I was just falling for. Okay. Left and right. Whoa, bam. Oh my gosh. Are you the one? Are you the one? And then I just fantasize and just write poems and I'm like oh the da 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 oh the da 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 but damn I'm tripping because you talking about rapping now rapping okay I'll tell you rapping. but that kind of translated into it yeah I kind of translated into it. that's how I started like writing mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying it was about like love and stuff and like fairy tales and things like that which is just like, wow <laughs> I mean you know we're fucking kids and shit at the time yeah you know I, I just couldn't believe like that like I don't know, like, there's videos, like, my mom has a video of me, like, there's a wedding, and I'm, like, there's, like, the flower girl, like, doing, like, flowers and stuff, like, and I'm, like, blowing bubbles behind it, just. <laughs> 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 so, like, um, that's what started it, and then I want to say the first, like, rap that I wrote was like essentially for a talent show in high school. Okay. And um the song that I wrote the rap to was a Drake song. 
And it was called, um, hold on. Hello, motherfucker. Hey, hi. How you doing? It's Wheezy Ed, baby. Come to take a shit of urine in the toilet bowl, bitches. Pussy ass niggas. Stunting on this beat like a motherfucking Sigma. I'm bad to the whistle. Okay. I can't remember the name, but I wrote it to that beat. Okay. I think that might be I'm going in, but... That yeah, I'm going wrong. in. That, that I'm going in. Okay. I wrote it to that beat. Like that was okay. my first ever rap that I But yeah, that was the first So that movie. was when you that, so that was probably middle school say, or yeah. no, that, you said that was high school. Yeah, cuz okay. like um that was your first rap and then after that well, did that was your first It was uh, my first like i want to say the first like rap that i've actually like written to perform okay because like for projects and stuff were you like, like freestyling before that writing raps before that or not a, not yeah, really yeah like i like i i could free i could freestyle but like no one knew no you one know what knew, i'm saying okay. yeah uh no one knew uh it was one of those things that i really So liked. this was like your big moment of like i'm kind of showing other people what i can do yeah right okay mm-hmm. Dope, dope. Yeah, and okay. then I didn't enter the talent show. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope, though. That's dope. I, I I did the back thing though. I I I did the lights. So it'd be like lights. I'd be like lights. <laughs> what do you mean? You like? Oh, like uh. So I was gonna enter the talent show, but I didn't because like you were scared. Yeah, yeah, I mean like it was just like. <laughs> What the fuck are you yeah, even what doing? I doing? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck are you? So you I'm pulled out dancing. last second or what? Yeah, I oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I pulled out, but I told them I still want to be a part of it. So they said I could do the lights. I said, oh, hey. okay. Though, so like they coached me. They'd be like, a light at a four or a light at a seven. Okay. Or just lights. Yeah. So okay. I was just so I just did that. So you, you know? got in somewhere. You yeah, just, I got hey yeah. hey. I was there. You You're like, I need me? to be a part of this production somehow. Yeah, I was there. You feel me? And like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I was scared of the joy that it would give me. Yeah. If I was to be real. Yeah. I I remember that as like a kid and like junior high and high school. And like, I wasn't like, my dad made us being like, me and my mm-hmm. brothers being 4-H and MFA and that shit. And some of it was cool. Some of it was, eh, but like. There was a couple times where I'd like speak in front of like a lot of people and that mm-hmm. shit was like nerve wracking. And for me there was no reward. I didn't want to yeah. fucking do it. It wasn't like, man, if I did this and pull it off, it'd be awesome. It was yeah. like, I gotta do this and man do I not want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do that shit, man. Somebody else do that shit. Why well, I gotta do it, man? It, yeah. <laughs> it, it it yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I guess it makes you gets you in the habit of like just doing like be yeah, able to just like, do nah, something and get something. it over with. Like, 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 I might not be ready for like that. Be ready step, for it, yeah. Like, ready for something. So then, so this is in like high school. So then, yeah. when do you really start make, you know, making, you know, writing raps and and oh, like more, getting you, more into it. And stuff? When do you start getting more into it a little bit more? Would you say it's like after high school or? Man, it's like okay. I will put it like this. And like, I hate to say it so much, cause like whenever like my mom and I would disagree on something, and I was like upset about it, she would always say, "Write it out." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I'm too bad to write it out." Write it out, then rip it up, then write it out again, and keep writing. Until you get to the root of your emotion. And, um, yeah, and I was a very emotional person, child at the time. And, uh, that was the only thing. And I, and I hated doing it. So I would work, I would try to control, like, I would try to control my emotions at all times. And, um, so I wouldn't get to that point to where I'd have to write yeah. because I did it. Yeah. Who was the writer with their man? But like, yeah. like football, like, bro, those niggas big. Bro, <laughs> 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 those niggas like, like I thought like, oh man, I used to get mad. 
Nah, <laughs> nah, them niggas, <laughs> <laughs> them niggas got some. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, bro, wait, <laughs> wait, what are you thinking about right now, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. So like, I want to say like that's what started me like writing, but like I never wrote in a sense of I'm fucking mad that this shit is going on and I and I can't, ble- you know, I ain't I ain't writing no like diary type stuff. The only thing that I was interested in writing was things that had a cadence to it. So, like, that's what kind of started the poetry. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm feeling low. Something's about to blow. I used to be educated, but I'm here under the bowl. Like, that was the only thing that would, like, let me, like, okay. Uh, all right. Mm, yeah. And okay. I just wasn't seeing it for what it was at the time because I was thinking, like, that was just a outlet. I didn't know it would. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know it's turning into this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a, that's so you kind of shifted it in your own, like, it's it's funny how like your you 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 hated it when your mom would try to do it like a punishment, but then it actually like when you turned it into your own way of doing it, it, it was like yeah, um, therapeutic in a way. You're like, okay, I like doing it. Yeah, she's when I do it my too. way. Yeah. But that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um. So let's see. I don't know if that answer your question like no i, I did it was that was that was good yeah because yeah, like i sometimes i have problems like getting to the root of things because i'm still figuring it out like i haven't necessarily like went back and seen why i am yeah sometimes people we think about the past but we don't think about specific like why did this happen this happened this yeah because i so. i've been so busy trying to like be in like this person We'll talk about that in a minute, but you were talking about just like figuring out everything. Like you're Mm -hmm. still figuring out all the things that go into being an artist, making connections, and it's a full time job. So yeah, for um, real. But like I, I love it. I mean, I I do it for free. I mean, (laughs) shit. You grinding it out. I mean, so shit free. Like yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so so you you did the you were gonna do the high school talent show. You were started writing. Your mom was. She had that as like a form of of helping you calm down, mm-hmm. and then you, you kind of turned it into your own thing. That's cool. And then uh, hey, you, you kind of huh? You're a good listener. Dad. A little bit. I try. Well, I'm high, so I miss some things. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so and then you had this taste for like, you know, a lot of kids go through this somewhat. But I feel like you were more than most. Where like you felt like misunderstood because you you saw the truth early on and that's yeah i I feel like that's how i am but maybe later on i feel like i can't imagine being like that as a kid like damn that would have been i can imagine that being rough um thank you i appreciate that yeah and so then you had this taste for like a little bit more deep music and like with a little bit like a darker tone yeah Um, crazy dark did that influence your name at all or Uh, how did you because your name's fake smiles but mm -hmm. it's spelled like interesting so you want, how did you yeah, how did that okay, come about so it's it has like so much meaning to it um okay so it's like so fake smiles like the name itself is in honor of the song made by fora called fake smiles and um the song is talking about like pain and heartbreak and just how much you've tried to be this person that you can't be at that moment because of how are you feeling Mm. and um i heard that song in college and uh i as i grew up i went through these stages where like i didn't necessarily like grow out of music but i was just feeling darker and darker Mm. and darker so like and I still wasn't understanding my feelings, but nor did I look for the answer to them, right? But when I found out about him and I heard that song, I felt understood. Mm. And when I felt understood, I'd realize that's how I'm feeling? Mm. Yeah. And then that's kind of scary. It's like, oh, my God. And that brought me into a different level of consciousness and i performed that song in college for a project and it was great okay <laughs> yeah. nice but like in a dancing song i ain't like it eh. but yeah okay okay so that kind of influenced that oh wait but there's like okay and then there's also the three and the five so 
and Mac Miller's song, uh, your favorite part with Ariana Grande, and the doors they go in one is a three and one is a five, right? And um, the song just talks about like love, but how the person's own uh, problems and stuff, how like it can like push them back but they still wanting to love but they're not able to give their full love because they aren't loving themselves and then there's a pool of love that is dying because you're not generating enough for yourself to be better for yourself but that's what they talk about in the song and they say it in like a an amazing way but if you look at it as a whole like you'll Mm -hmm. you'll see and i believe like that song is like man like that's like america like with love like oh i want to do this but i'm also this and i'm also that and i'm still hate about da 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 because people aren't kind of themselves they're mm-hmm. not they're not kind of themselves and it's definitely uh a journey and it's definitely like difficult to be kind to yourself but it was like that and then like also three five you type it in like a cell phone it's d and k and like my uh <laughs> My uh, best friend and I, rest in peace, Cody, um, one of our first, like, dreams was to be, like, tag team wrestlers. And my name would be DKPM, and his name was BBB. So if you type in uh, DK, it's a 3-5. So it's also DK stands for Demon Killer Pain Murderer. All right. That's <laughs> All right. So, like, yeah, like, like I said, I was, a, I was a dark kid, but that was going to be my wrestling name. Mm. So, like, I, I didn't want to spell it out because, like, you know who would put me on if like because i wanted something that's like oh i'm a, if i'm gonna start this and i'm gonna do this then like i want the name to be solidified so i was like i'm just gonna do dkpm huh and then okay. so i i cut so like it's that two and the three five and um also because like all my life people would always tell me like oh you know you're so happy all the time you know duh, duh. and some people actually tell me like sometimes i get jealous of it <laughs> and i tell them well i said don't be jealous because i'm not and most of the time i'm i'm not happy but huh. i try to be where i am in that moment and just live it because i don't know when i'll have that chance again yeah and they'd be like understood but like it's just and like i don't ever get mad at stuff like that because like not everyone can like see it and sometimes i may not be able to see it i try to i try to be aware but yet again i'm a human as well and yeah. my emotions can Get the best of me. Yeah. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's hard. And like, it's interesting. Yeah. Like when you're, yeah, like it gets deep when you're like a deep thinker and thinking about all these things and then you don't know how deep other people are thinking about it. Yeah. And like a lot of times you don't, like you say, you, you might be dealing with your own things, but you don't really put it out there for other people to consume and you're trying to just be happy so you don't rub off on other people and then they get mad and have their own issues. It's yeah, just like all the shit and, to do. And it's like, like, man, like, <clears throat> it takes two, but it takes one to start. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, I definitely know what you're talking about with that, but, you know. Um, so, um, what am I trying to say with this? Um, when did you start, like, when did the music thing really materialize? And when did you really, st- like, when did it, because you're, you're, you're writing the poems, mm-hmm. then you're starting to write the raps about, like, what you're feeling and how you, like, are you writing about things that you're seeing in the world or, like, about yourself or what are you, mm-hmm. what is the content or, like, your early, Man, early or a, a combination of both probably? And If I was not in love with someone... I was mad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So love songs and then like frustration, and then yeah. so at what point did you did you start? To, what part did you start like actually putting it all together and like when did you make your first I guess like song and was there stuff like leading up to that or was it pretty much just kind of the writing and then one day you're like I'm gonna put it all together like was it kind of a man, like was it a, a a gradual incline or did it just all kind of happen once man, like ha- lead, was, lead us you want me to it. keep it you want me to keep it real it was like um sprinkles 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 just a little bit here a little bit sprinkles. there and then one yeah one working day with like different song. people and then like oh you, so you're, you're meeting people along the way too that and then yeah. one day you you're you're one day I met like uh, uh 
the homie. Yeah, it was really damn. Hold up, there's like I'm trying to figure out like where to start because like okay, I'll I'll put it like this. So like throughout college, I have um done different like dance performances as well as uh like a uh, perform like a uh, poem performances. So okay. I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hell, what? <laughs> um, and then people who would hear it that were like artists themselves would always give me like great compliments and stuff and like uh some of them i got to work with they're like hey you should try this song with me and da da and then okay. like we try it and da da and yeah so like it would be like dibble and dabble but i i never took it to a point where like i was just like i didn't have that confidence yet right and like because i didn't have that confidence you could hear it when i was rapping or singing in the song mm. so like so like those were just like dibbles and dabbles but it wasn't in a sense it was helping me in a sense of like getting connected like i met my engineer who is still rocking with me today at texas state like mm. so like is that where you started it, it doing the these these uh poem things at texas state or um, was that bef- before well like, i always like wrote poetry but as far as like performing rights like I remember, like, during um, our residence hall that I was staying in, we had some kind of, like, like, a performance thing or it was, like, some kind of, like, talent show. I'm not entirely sure, but I actually, like, performed a poem, which, like... I, it's so crazy, like, that I, that I really did that because, like, just... I'm thinking of younger me, you know, and, like... I don't know, it's weird. Like, for projects, like, I, w- I wouldn't mind, like, doing stuff like that and uh and whatnot but i just feel like (sighs) okay i'll put it like this when i'll tell you when i felt full okay so when i felt a joy that i never felt before and that kind of like brought a shock to my system it was when you know, a good friend, Joey, right? Mm-hmm. And Joey's a homie. And Joey invites me over to the crib, right? And uh, I go over there, and he is like, yo, my roommate does music. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, his roommate comes up, and he's, like, walking down the stairs. He's wearing, like, a brown hoodie. And he's like, hey, Chandler, my friend, he freestyles. And I was like, why would you tell him that? <laughs> I was like, look, bro, it's just for fun. It's nothing like crazy or anything or serious. And uh, he was like, nah, he does. And the dude was like, hey, well, uh, I have this song. Would you be interested in hearing it? And I was like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, um, music period. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a fuck. If you want to fucking put paper clips together and rub and. <laughs> I can do that too. I'd be entertained. That's great. I just pretend I'm in the forest or something. So we went upstairs and he played the song and all I heard was, it's been months since you've called, no text, no reply. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And like the guitar behind it and the cadence, like it felt like, like an entrance. And I was like, man, that sounds like, like dope. And he was like, would you like to be on it? Like, I have my studio set up. Like, if you want, you could write and we can record you. And I was like, you know, I, I'll write something to this. Okay. So, so you know, I started writing. And I thought about it in my head. And I was like, damn. I was like, that just sound like ass. So I started thinking again. Because, <laughs> like, that was like, it's straight up my feeling, you know what I'm saying? But I had to, I realized that I had to put a different piece of me into it in order for it to become a song. And like a song and soul both start with S. So mm-hmm. like I had to put a piece of my soul because most of the times my emotions and emotions are human thing. You know, like, I mean, we'll have emotions like whenever it's our time and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as like uh when I was like writing and stuff, it was just through my emotions, but not 
me. It was what I felt, but not me. Mm. So um, I was like, I need to put me into it. My style, like me, however in the field that I feel it has to go. No influences. So I wrote and I recorded it and they played it back. And it was like, imagine like someone like holding things that glow, just glowy things, but it's like light, but like you can hold it and like it can like roll. And then like they put in your stomach and like your whole body just becomes this aura of rainbows. That's what I felt. And it scared the shit out of me. (laughs) I said, well, that's great. Let's sit on it. Don't release it. (laughs) You know, like, that's great. And he was like, oh, you want to finish it? And I was like, no, I don't. Mm. Because it was a very scary feeling to know that at that moment, I wanted to live. Like, Mm. I was, like, really surprised. And, uh... Yeah, and it was some years passed after that before it even got released. Like, years. Mm. Like, I want to say, like... And it's crazy because the first part of that song, it's me when I'm... Dang, what? If I'm 26 now, mm, 21, 20? Maybe, like, 20? Mm. Or, like, 19? I think, like, 19 or 20. Yeah, 19 or 20. And then, like, I finished the song when I was, like... 22 or 23 yeah something like that Mm. so there's like two different like me's on there but it all like fits in but that was like the oh that's gonna be walking in my mind now Mm. but I tried to uh, I tried to stay away from it so I didn't like go back to it or anything hmm and uh yeah i i went through life and uh i'm trying to remember what was the catalyst because there was a catalyst that uh i think it was either like a bit of one of my close friends passing away during that time and um Oh, okay. I know what it was. I realized that like what I went to college for and everything, I it was cool and I enjoyed doing the the therapy stuff mm-hmm. um with my clients and whatnot. But I realized I didn't feel a joy. And like the fact that I know what that feels like, I cannot unfeel it especially from something that I I did by a surprise Mm. so like after like that fell through like I ended up leaving I just knew it wasn't right for me so I was like you know I hit up the homie and was like hey we should finish that song hmm and then, like, even that, like, was a, like, process, like, going to different engineers and having different things done to it. And, like, we're all just, like, starting up. Like, we all, like, like, we get it. <laughs> and then um, I realized my boy was still around, uh, the, the one that I had met through my other homie. And I went to him, and, like, it was, like, magic. And then that's when Disgusting came to be. And uh, that was with Sweet Sugar. And um, those were great times, man. I told the homie, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no. So, <clears throat> so I was going to say, so that's about 2019. Was that the first, one of the, per- probably the first song you were on? Yeah, like, um, okay. and it was, it was gifted to me. Uh, but then it didn't come out till later. Yeah, it didn't come out till 2022. Okay. So when did you put out your first song, would you say? Oh, my would that be first recently? song? Okay, well. Okay, like first song like ever or first official? Cause first official song was that one. 
Okay. But as far as like but then that SoundCloud, didn't come out later, so there was probably yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now on SoundCloud, there is one song that I had actually like during the time of when I met the engineer that I have today. Uh-huh. I had went to him on a separate occasion and did a one take okay. of one song, the first time I ever did by myself, like where it's just all me. I went, found the beat, mm. and like did everything. And uh, that song's called Relapse, and that's I released that on SoundCloud. Okay, and where? So where do you where do you find your beats most of the time? Oh man, so it's like either like it could be the homies, it could be someone I met. Um, just wherever. Yeah, most yeah, it's just wherever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's Easter all year for a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like with some eggs, some people to work with. Let's work. Let's get connected because we just all bring each other up and, and it's then, a good community. So, and th- so most of the time when you make a song, you're going to a legit or s- you're going to a studio mm-hmm. and working with like producers or engineers or some- somebody studio else. Or like, like, like my homies are, um, like they, they know their stuff. They, got, knows what they're doing. Yeah, they got their okay. stuff down. Do you like, that's interesting because it's I know like, that depending, do like, you feel like yeah. that's, some people have their own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, do you feel like, what are the advantages or disadvantages, do you think? So, let's see. Because, like, it's good that they have probably a lot of knowledge and years of working mm-hmm. on it, and they can, it takes a lot of time out of your hands. You just show up, lay down the music, and then they work on it. But at the same time, you have to work with, like, their schedule and stuff like well, that. Well, it's like, let's see how I explain it. Um, the kind of homies... And things that I have are, like, uh, it's collaborative. We all, like, have, like, input, and we all, like, help each other and whatever we need. And you want to hop on this? Yeah, let's go. Like, I ain't charging for bars. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, And, like, when it comes to, like, uh, studio stuff, I, like, cycle between, like, different people. Like, I got the homie that I've been working with for, like, six years who's touched all my records every single thing i have he has touched and done shout out to three hound sound man and thank you for that love comment on my instagram man i appreciate that man you the one sir you can't park here sam crazy man shout out to him Um, damn (laughs) what was the question (laughs) (laughs) no i think i was asking uh just like I oh, get, oh, the d- advantages and disadvantages. Right. Okay, so the advantage is um, honestly the relationship, the relationship growing. I feel like sometimes though, like whenever, you, are you ever in a time where like you're in a mood to make a song and then like, if you had your studio at your house, you could mm-hmm. just lay it down. But like, oh, if I you're like tripping. in the mood, in the zone. Mm-hmm. Oh get, yeah, I ain't tripping. I I'll write it right then and there. And like I could save either it like, for later. Yeah, I could either write it, save it for later. Or find a beat that matches the cadence that I want. And do you or usually BPM. write to a beat, or do you usually it write your depends. stuff beforehand? Or both? Um, I I can tell you, like for example, my song "Star," "Star" I wrote uh, beforehand. I was <laughs> I was at work angry. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was tired, and like this is during the time when like I was still trying to figure out the the artist mindset and like how to move and get in tune with how things are ran so i can like input myself mm-hmm. in between those things and like i was just like uh frustrated and like whenever like i'm a very spiritual person so i, I just feel like whatever vibration you're at is what you receive so when you're at a low vibration low vibrational things tend to come mm-hmm. towards you and go in your mind or uh, God forbid the physicality, you know what I'm saying, or like oh whole, and like um, I was just like okay, I'm just gonna write. So then that's when like I would just print out receipt paper, and I just wrote, I'd rather beat box and kick rocks, wasting my time doing shit that I don't love and I won't confide. My insecurity roared. <laughs> I messed up my own lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's not a performance. <laughs> 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 but. Yeah, so, like, that's, and that's just, like, one way, like, it just, I'm really, what's it, versatile, so, like, Mm. I could, like, write anything at any time, but then I could also get inspired at certain times, 
Mm. But either or, the things that I'm writing about are messages that I receive. And I just put it out there as do, like, all artists. Like, um, there was this interview with uh, Michael Jackson. Or I can't remember if it was an interview or documentary, but he had hit up his uh, engineer, I want to say, like, maybe, like, at 4 in the morning, mm. and said, hey, I have this idea for a song. We have to record it. And uh, like, I was like, Mike, you know, it's 4 in the morning. Why do you want to do it now? Because if I don't, Prince would have already wrote it. And, like, he understood that, like, we as artists are messengers and, like, we are, like, spiritual yeah. people. And, mm. like, yeah, we can all receive it. Just who's going to, you know what I'm saying? Recognize like, it first. Or yeah, it's yeah. like the Ninja Academy. Oh, we have s rank missions and stuff. <laughs> you know, who's going to take it? Mm. So, I would say, like, the relationships are the advantages because like you just build more and like i said we're all collaborative like we all like help each other out but then like when it's time like like music bills and stuff like we'll pay or it just like it all like depends there's so many things that goes on like some things you pay for or, like some things you buy like but like most of the time it's just we're just all collaborating mm. And like I'm a like I I'm pretty like I'm getting like adequate at guitar like okay. adequate as in like I can make some shit happen, all right. And I mean it just the way that sounds. I can make <laughs> some shit happen on guitar. Now I don't know what kind of shit, but it's some shit that I can make happen. So like, and like also on like the recent stuff I've done like guitar and things like that and. um is there anything else, any other instruments you can play or that you're messing around with, or is that um, kind of... Well, I, I played tennis saxophone in middle school, and I still remember... You, you're still a little... Yeah, I still remember, still like, how to play it. it, but, like, I haven't played it in a minute, but, like, I can play. It's an instrument I can play. Okay. I also have a bass, so I've been practicing that as well. I've been practicing bass and guitar. Okay. Um, but guitar is, is my the main strongest one, one so far. Yeah. With. Okay. Is there anyone you listen to to kind of help with that, or you just kind of... Um, so like I tried to, uh, so since I've started this journey, like for these last two years, I've really limited my ears to, uh, certain music. I try to keep the originality of like when I was growing up, what I listened to and let that like be the influence. Mm. So as far as like guitar, I wanted to find my own style. Cause like I have guitar influences cause I listen to rock music, like Evanescence, like Evanescence, like that's my core, like the like the darkness and the the truth and the reality behind it, like that's the core of my being, like just that right there is just morphing. Mm -hmm. So um, man, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so so you're you're the whole time your evolution of it, you're you're doing the poet, the writing, the poetry, mm -hmm. you're you're trying it out in college. You, you were going to do the middle school thing, but you didn't really do it. And then yeah. you said the last two years is when you've been more serious with it. But you, there's all this stuff like kind of leading up to yeah, it. Yeah, there's all this stuff leading up to it because I knew I couldn't just, I, like me, I don't ever just have one foot in yeah. anything. I mean, I yeah. can't live that way. Yeah. I have to be either all in or all out. Mm -hmm. So, like, I knew that if I was to do it, I'd have to do it with all of me so i, I was i think this kind of goes into that when you for pretty much all of your songs you or most of them you do music videos right yeah i try to do as many music videos as i can have visuals do you think that's yeah. a big advantage um i would say so there's a lot of people that would argue like not like oh you know you can just have like a 15 second clip and post it here da 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 da, da. but I believe in the fact that if they made 15 second movies, you would not go to the theater. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and music videos, um, not only is it like a display of your song, but it's also a display of it in your understanding. Cause everyone thinks of something different when they hear mm. their music because it's in relations to them. Right. But, but once now they, they know what it, it's supposed uh -huh. to look like, yeah. Yeah, and now they have a different understanding of it. Mm. So, like, if you can tell um, in my music videos, there's a theme of uh, darkness, but it's beautiful. Mm. 
So like a lot of bright colors and stuff, but there's a slight creepiness to it. But it's just enough to gauge your attention for you to listen to the words and actually go to that world of what the message is that I'm trying to convey and therefore like help anyone that is feeling in the way that I felt and help them make the right decision towards ascension. And sometimes it's just through getting that emotion out or finding some form of understanding behind that emotion. Mm. Yeah. And that's why I really think like music videos and stuff are important. It's also just memories and like just living life, man. Like, like living life. Like I will never put out a song to where I wouldn't think a music video would be needed to it because really, like, yeah, because like it's a, a song to me is a world. A song to me is an album. But uh, this is a, just a question from like the like. Because in this day, we were talking about a little bit before, I think we started of like, we digest music so quickly. Don't you think like w to make a music video to every song is going to slow down how quickly you can put it out? So don't mm -hmm. you think, you know what I mean? And I was talking with Joey, mm -hmm. uh, shout out Joey Flex again, before uh, and we were talking about, I told him I was just thinking to myself and I was telling him, and I'll pose now the question to you. Do you think it's like we used to see people put out like uh, mixtapes and mm -hmm. albums and now people still put out albums here and there, but nobody does mixtapes. And a lot more people just put out like single songs here or there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like what do you feel like helps build up a fan base more or like people really like vibe with more? Do you feel like people real still care about full projects or are they or like you're better off just putting a song here, song there, song I think, okay, let's put it like this. So there's like a fork in the road. You got the long road and you got like trying to achieve a certain amount of uh, interest within that time period from that song. Because you can totally build a lot of content from one song in mm. different ways. I see, right? yeah. But in the long term, like for an example say like say like i've been doing this stuff right and then i meet someone and they're like oh i'm gonna listen to your stuff and they see five albums and they all have different covers and you know each album has a theme some some form of theme or technicality but they're able to like catalog and like listen and see the differences in between each one and see how you can attack different things mm. whereas like now you could like release them also in singles like format but like i said like 15 second movie y'all yeah. going to see a 15 second movie or and like you can it's it's really a so it's like honestly no I'm matter asking, in like, how you, you, you do you think it'd be better to put out like a six song mixtape and then nothing else for six months or one song a month for six months. But those, uh, those others, you know, like, um, I would say only because of like the algorithms and stuff, especially with Spotify being you the, would top say the one dog, song. A month. It would be like, yeah, it would be the one song a month. Well, I mean, it wouldn't, well, for me, it wouldn't be one song a month. I would, I would try to, I try to put out as much music as possible, but right. I always have at least, like two weeks in advance to give time for Spotify to like look at it and decipher and decide whether or not they want to playlist it. And, you know, you write all the information, da, da, da. But if you release an album, you can only still submit one song. Whereas within that album, you can submit each song every two to four weeks and have each one submitted for playlisting. Hmm. So like, that's what I'm doing. That's what, I'm on right now. Okay. So like, but I do, I am putting out the album. I'm just releasing them as singles first and then the album comes out. So okay. it's there. And like, luckily like the streams, like, okay, y'all, this is kind of like game. So the streams, they'll always be together. Even if you have a clean version or a radio version, the streams will be together because it's that song period. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So like, even though I have them all out of singles, when the album comes out, 
the singles are gone, everything's gonna be played from that album. Uh, okay. And then when everything gets played from that album, because people are like, oh, where's that song? Da 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 da. They go to the album. Right, and then that'll get pushed even more because now everyone's. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. like, you gotta play with that. And like, another thing for any artist or just <laughs> for any artist or musician out there. Play it by ear to a point of where you have to be in tune with like how the things work in which of how you're distributing your music. Because once you get in tune with that, you'll know how to move within the market. Like if you're a car salesman and now you work at a hotel, those two are not the same things. You have to learn how to move in a hotel. Now, you can use some of the knowledge you get from, like, selling cars, mm -hmm. but now you got to sell rooms, and the inventory is different. It's a little different. Yeah, as well as the seasons and stuff. So, so when you, as you're, like, writing and making music and stuff, you say, like, who, like when you were starting and who, like you said, uh, Cole, Kendrick, uh, who else did you say you were listening to? And, like, w as you're making music now, do you... You said you try to listen to only what you listen to when you grow up. So, who who do you, if anybody, who do you listen to now, or who do you do you try not to listen to, like anybody, or like who kind of influences mm -hmm. your music now, if anybody? <laughs> you said Immortal Technique, Cole, Kendrick. There was like one yeah, or two other man, people. There's on. like so. Many, there's so like, many. I want to say like all right, I'm just gonna name a lot like, Tene Aiko, Lupe Fiasco. Um, Black, uh, Wiz Khalifa, Kanye West, Chris Brown. Okay. Let's see. Nicki Minaj. Let's see. Eva Eve, Lauren Hill. And then, oh my gosh, we got The Far Side. We got uh, Big Pun. We got Fat Joe, we got Tupac, of course, we got Biggie, um, Craig Mack, you know what I'm saying, Wu-Tang Clan, uh, guys, there's so many, uh, Jaden Smith, like, Jaden okay. Smith was really, like, a huge influence because I saw how he was growing, like, through the screen and through, like, the interviews and the shows he would get on, like, from, like, Pursuit of Happiness to Karate Kid and when the Cool album came out and, like, mm -hmm. uh, when he did, like, a remix, like, his version of Pumped Up Kicks, that really got, like, I was like, wow, like, you can really do, like, anything, you know? Because, like, I didn't think, like, I don't know, it's just it's just crazy. Like, there's so many talented artists oh, and, yeah. like, people are talented in their own way because there's, like, certain people that are talented in a way where, like, man, I could never... You know what I'm saying? Like, I could never do that in that way. And, like, gosh, that's just so incredible. Like, yeah, we're all humans, but we can all do different things. And we mm -hmm. all, like, eat different things and in different ways and digest things. And it's just, on our body reacts to things. It's just crazy, all the differences. And uh, there's, just, there's just, like, yeah, so much. But, um... Yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. No, it, it did, for <laughs> sure, for sure. So, I guess what I'm trying to, well, I don't know what, almost what I'm trying to ask, but I'm just trying to kind of get a form, you know, of, like form my of top thing five? for the audience. But I, go ahead. What oh, like top five? Uh, If you want to. But no, I was just saying, I'm, if you want to, name your top five. But uh, I was, uh, maybe we could do that like a little later, but mm -hmm. I was just trying to, I'm trying to form a view for the audience of they get your story of, kind of all you know what what you're you know coming up the you know just kind of what shaped you as an artist the whole fucking story so i'm just yeah. trying to think of what oh, i'm trying to ask next next um i think i kind of um what what uh what what got you serious about like okay i i'm doing it but now i want to go to the studio and it, it's real now. Like, when did you? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay and coordinate to have a music video shot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the studio. I've already had this written down. Like, I'm gonna make this an actual song. When, when did like what? Like, talk about when that, how that Let's push see. happened, and like when your first like, when when it all came together. When you said I'm like, you know, 
first song, how did that happen? You know, your first. Okay. I know it's hard because like a, a lot of things happen to make that happen. Kind yeah, of, but... it was like, man, there were so many like brave periods and stuff because I was just running from it. I was just, I was really running. Um, gosh, I ain't never like ran from something and been so unhappy running. Most of the time you run from something, you're like, oh, I'm trying to get to a better place. But yeah, it was, it was just running into a, like a dark tunnel. Um. Man, so, like, it took me a second to find a videographer. Mm. Um, well, it's, like, there's so many different things. So, like, there's the music video thing because, like, I had music out and I was putting it out. But, like, it was took, it took me a second to find the videographer that I felt um, connected to and uh, that I could afford. Yeah. So, like, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to focus on the songs for now because I can generate content. And I was performing with a band at the time as well. And, like, that started after. Oh, okay. So, what happened was, so, you know, um, I was, like, working as a certified therapeutic recreational specialist. And then I left that because I I knew that it wasn't giving me that joy Mm. that I felt before. And I would only be doing a disservice. You know, I can't, like I said, I can't be like one foot in and one foot out. It has to be every part of me. Yeah. Um. So after that, I was just like, you know, hey, let's, uh, oh, wait. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. After I graduated, it was like during the part, like after I graduated, like around the time when I, became a ctrs was around the time that i also started doing music okay so they they started at the same time for me actually like the first performance i ever had was january 20th 2022 and i literally started my job on my birthday damn so did you start performing before you even put out your first song uh musically no no music okay. uh musically no but dancing yeah but i had like i had relapse on soundcloud but nothing like nothing else yeah really. nothing official even then when i was like performing like because that song didn't come out till uh later in that year like in may but i was performing that one and uh bobby and bobby okay. was uh also another one written by chandler like the music itself so these songs you're playing that are being performed with like live instruments, do you did you write them together with the band or do you write them beforehand and then they come up with like the tune or kind of how does that work? So like we so Chandler had this um he had this tune just like So he already had the kind of thing. Yeah, he had he had that thing, right? Okay. And he sent it to me and I was like Oh, what is this? And like he called it Bobby, and I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna keep it that name." Yeah, I, I got you. And like, I I started writing to it, and then my homie hit me up, uh, Ryan, who also uh, was on the song. He hit me up to go to Sewell, so I went to Sewell, and I wrote the rest there. And like that's how Paper okay. Routes Glock Nine in the Couch. That's how that came up, and um, it was just purely from the heart, and like. That's like when I was realizing, like, man, like I got it, and like, and I didn't even write the whole thing then. I just wrote that verse, and then when we practiced it, like literally, I want to say, we practiced it the same day as the show. It's interesting. You kind of wanted to do it, but you were kind of didn't. You didn't know if you wanted to or not, and then you had this one guy. I forget his name. Chandler right? Marriott. Yeah. No, no, not. Well, who, who, you did that song in 2019, and then you finished it up like two or three, or in yeah, 22 that or was, three. Yeah, that was with Chandler. That yeah. was with Chandler. And uh-huh. then there's this other song. Relapse, yeah. Re- that was Relapse? Yeah. that The that, one that you finished, started and then finished up later? I mean, honestly, both of them. Relapse was like And then Bobby six years was old. another one that he was already kind of working on. Yeah. So but that one he just had collabs kind of come together mm-hmm. and then like he he gifted them to me he was That's like awesome. these are your songs yeah. and i was like what like yeah 
Hey, shout out to Chandler, man. I love you, man. Always. That's dope. The connections kind of happen and yeah that's yeah awesome. and it's like crazy like i realized like man i'm i'm around like-minded people and like it's for a reason like i knew like like look you're doing podcasts and joey's doing the video game streaming so you know what i'm saying and then yeah. y'all also do music we've done music together yeah. we got songs together outside yeah. like, we do some more songs together my g yeah and, like well that shit i'll do a video to it everything like mm. and like now like like, because we're all, like, my individuals. And, like, Ryan's doing this thing, too. Ryan's with me. We all doing this stuff together. We, like, building something. Yeah. And, like, it's crazy. We're we're part of the community. Like, we are the future and the present. And, like, thank God. Liz. <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what other questions. Let's see. Um... How often do you do shows? Let's see. More often than not, for sure. Um, so, like, how many times? Do oh, like, how many? Like, a month? Or a month. Or, are you doing hmm. one a week? Or are you doing one or two a month? I would say it would range between... It would range between, like, two to five or two to six per month, I'd say. And... We were talking a little bit, I think, before we started filming, but, like, um, just talk about, like, you have a band, so you probably have, like, what, two or three guys that Mm -hmm. go with you every time, Uh, and then you have to, some venues, you have to bring your own own equipment, some you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, What's the experience like? I guess I don't even know what to ask, but just, like... um, I don't even know what I want to ask, but like, like I guess just what has your yeah. experience been like? What is something that has surprised you, and then what's something that hasn't surprised you about like doing shows? Like, mm. oh, oh, I see what you mean. Okay. I just kind of want to get like the vibe of like what's it, what's what is your experience of like doing a show? So like, what's something that's like, oh, I knew it was gonna be like this, and then what's something that, like doing shows? You're like, damn, this is crazy. I I did not expect this. Man, honestly, man. I just think it is what it is and perform like it should last. And that's it. Like, you want to keep it real 100? Like, <laughs> like that's my that's my mindset. Like, I just go in and I perform as if it's going to be my last performance. This is what people are going to remember me by because, like, tomorrow is not promised. And, like, um, so, like, what I mean, the reason why I said that in my explanation is because uh, in the way I perceive things, it it's hard for me to like go somewhere and be like ooh and ah mm-hmm. like oh this like that I'd be like all right yeah this is dope all right I need to see how big the stage is okay so I can do this this and that I probably shouldn't do that right da, 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 da. a lot of stuff to work on yeah like I don't yeah. I don't ever like um and like even the crowd like I think people don't understand how much like it's show business but it's mm-hmm. like. Biz, like it's it's work like yeah, to be a business, man. to be an artist or to like do a podcast business. or yeah it's a lot of yeah. work it's like you gotta all that mm-hmm. you know it's not just showing up and showing it's not just the 10 minutes you see them on stage or however long you're on stage it's like having your music on the usb and mm-hmm. having your band there and making sure you, they have all their equipment and yeah, yeah timing of everything schedules, and yeah. scheduling schedules and, cool. yeah <laughs> so Nobody, my brother always tells me, no one wants to hear about the behind the scenes, but like it, it goes into shit and it's, it's mm-hmm. work. So yeah, behind, yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Got it. Man, like I, I'll tell like any other artist or musician out there, professionality is number one. Just always be professional, but in like a street kind of way, like just keep it cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone says like dedicated to what you're doing as you. So it's like that kind of play, you know. Yeah, like you have to be like, you gotta be, you have to be in it. Like, yeah. you have to embody who you are and what you want to become. You have to embody it in the present day. Embody your future today, and that's what it will be. Mm, yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? About like yeah. I've. There may be mm-hmm. something I missed that was obvious or something, but is there anything else you want to talk about your see. Uh, being an artist, your journey, or um, 
Yeah, there's okay, there's a couple things trying to see where to start. Man, I'd have to say like live life. You know, do the things you want to do, but don't put too much pressure on yourself to be perfect and correct all the time because there's some things we don't know and that's out of our control but the world will keep turning and you got to turn with it sometimes Hmm. but just know that whatever you went through no matter what you go through, you will always learn from it. And there's a reason for learning from it and becoming stronger than you once were before. So just try to use it as empowerment and and don't let it break you down in a way you can't pick yourself back up again. Because you can only break certain things a certain amount of times before, you know, and I'm not saying like, oh, you know, you can be broken like you can be broken for periods of time or you could be broken period but whichever it is just try your best to keep calm and to be content with a form of peace that holds weight for you hmm could be that we but that's how I'm feeling yeah <laughs> Um, I'll say this. Uh, I want to say shout out DDI Productions. Um, long live DDI. Uh, my homie passed away recently. He shot, I want to say like three, three of my videos. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say this now since this is my first podcast, you know, and I received the news. I want to say like two days ago. Um, I love you. Thank you for always believing in me. Thank you for mentoring me. And thank you for your undying kindness. And um, if it wasn't for you, I would not be where I am today. And I will always do great things in your name because you always believed in me. And uh, I got you. Thank you for everything. He's a he's an icon in Austin, like through generations, like just an incredible human being, man. He did it all, man. Produced, mixed, mastered, made beats, studio stuff, videos, just everything. That he was an unseen hero. And uh, how did y'all meet? Um, so we met through infamous Trey Ali. Uh, okay. So, like, I'd hit him up and ask him, like, man, I'm looking for a videographer. Like, I've been looking for some, and they're either, like, too expensive or, like, their schedule's on. Because, you know, Austin's, like, yeah. Like, everyone's, like, doing stuff. And, like, I know, like, I was also, like, working, like, during that time, I was working a pretty demanding job as well as doing the music stuff. And then I was also, like, serving on the weekends. Like, I was... Yeah. Doing all kinds of stuff like back then to like stay afloat. Yeah. And um but I called him and asked him and he said, Hey, like, there's this dude, his name's DDI, like check out his work, man. Like he, he makes dope music videos, he does this, this and that. And I was like, Okay, for sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him up. And and uh man, that like that whole experience was amazing. Like like I hit him up but some things were going on. He was like, oh, I think, like, uh, I think he was, like, moving studios or something with equipment. But I was like, oh, no, nah, that's fine. Dude. Uh, we can, you know, we can make it work. And um, I waited because, like, I, I knew, like, he he was it. Like, I saw his videos that he had out and his whole, like, symbol and, like, how he presents himself. And I was just captivated mm. by by his aura. 
So I was like, nah, like, that's it. And, like, I knew exactly what songs I wanted him to shoot. And it was just, like, perfect. Mm. And um, one of the songs was called Monsters. And uh, I'd written Monsters after going through a very tough experience. And um, I had went and found the beat, loved the beat, bought the beat, and ran and recorded it. And um, it was and I, I I sung on it too, and that was my first time like like singing, like like singing for real, like on a track. And um, then like literally like on the same day, like I hit him up and I was like, "Hey yo, you got your pen?" He was like, "Bro, that's crazy. I was just about to hit you up. Like, yeah, you trying to shoot the video?" And I was like, "Hell yeah." And I found the perfect spot. It was like uh, right across the street from LA Fitness. It was like an abandoned motel type of thing, but like there was like some people like living in it, like homeless people and whatnot. And um, I was like, oh, that would be perfect. There's graffiti on everything, but there was a problem. There was a bulldozer there. So like every day for a week, like from Monday through, no, Sunday through Wednesday, because we shot the video on a Thursday. I was going up to make sure, okay, they haven't torn it down. Okay, they haven't torn it down. Uh, they haven't torn it down. And then the day of the shoot came, and I didn't have any plan for it. All I had was an idea, and I've never shot, like, a music video before, but I had gotten experience being in music videos prior. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, I kind of understand, like, how it goes. But as far as orchestrating everything, like me, like, I had to jump in the water. Yeah. That's just me. That's the only way I figure out things. I just had to jump in and figure out my own understanding of it. So I just went to Terrace Toys and I bought a whole bunch of smoke bombs and stuff and just anything. And I ordered a mask that lights up. And I just got anything that was colorful to convey the message of how uh, life is beautiful and that there is beauty and traumatic experiences and it's the things that you learn from it and how they make you stronger mm. and i know that's very hard to show because a lot of there's a lot of people in this world who are more visual than like hearing like me i could hear some learn from it. i'm cool like perfect i don't have to da 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 but but yeah i gotta uh experience it so i got there and it was him and another friend of mine and like they helped me like set up shots and direct me oh you can do this and you can do that and da 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 and like ddi he explained like how the shoot goes he was like oh i'll do like shots here shots here shots here and then uh i don't think he said bilu i I don't know i call it bilu i'd be like oh bilu but it's like uh it's a type of camera shot to where it's like you like doing something that might come in slow motion but the stuff you put in between like the if there's like holes or anything or like certain bars you know you put that b loo there like say like oh because okay. i'm eating cheetos and then do the whole cheetos you know like okay. that, that's a b loo shot well <laughs> i call it b loo but oh, my homies are gonna roast me for this later because <laughs> they get on me every time i say b loo but um yeah he he directed me and everything and um shot the video and it was just it was just such a great experience and he was telling me how like man he was like gosh you can do like so many different things over here because like you have that space and then that space like we can shoot different videos there and there and he was just so creative and like and like kind and like gentle and like his aura Mm. his aura was just i don't know it was I can't explain it, but, like, I just knew that he was something. And, like, us meeting and everything, like, was meant to be. Like, we were meant to meet and, like, meant to work together. And then after we shot the video, they tore all of it down. Yeah. Like, the day after. And, um, that was, oh, it's crazy. Uh, That was, um. And that was just the first experience. And, like, I I was going through a tough time at that time. And, like, 
I had like no idea what I was doing. I was just feeling anxious all the time because I just felt like um, I wasn't in alignment. Mm. And I was just like, I just gotta get this video shot. I I have an idea, you know. I want to show the beauty of the darkness and light. And um, it was that, and it was perfect because like the way he edited the video and like how the things and reverse and slow motion and like we just had so many dope shots like like i was like originally i wanted to get that shot in like a dancing scene at um la fitness and the thing where i'm like dancing with the lights like you know what i'm saying like okay. different stuff like that but he was like i don't know man he's like we got so many dope shots like, i think you just keep it like this like this is a great theme and like we yeah. did because it it looks like different things there's so many different variations and styles yeah and you know what's crazy? We shot that shit in an hour. <laughs> All that we shot in an hour. So was that your first like? Was that your first uh, music video? Yeah, that was my first. Okay, that was about what two years ago? Um, was it two years? Roughly. Ago? Yeah, roughly two years ago. Okay. Nice. And then, so y'all worked together for a good two years. He was shooting all your videos and like helping yeah, you with all there, your there's songs only, and stuff. Yeah, there's only one that uh, my other homie shoot, but. Yeah, like I, like I said, like all artists are like different. They have different styles, and like intuitively, I know like which style I envision like the song in. So it's like, oh, perfect. His style is da da da. So like, and I was still discovering my style, but mm. like the birth of my style was because of him. You know what I'm saying? It was, and it's great because like he would always like I brought. Let's see. I think I brought it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I on it. Whoops. Oh, I had a mask, but... Oh, it's over there. Oh, yeah, it's over there. Well, I'll bring it later, but... um, If you want to get it, I'll fucking... I'm going to make sure the headphones are hooked up, and then we can, like, uh, check out one of your songs real quick. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, man, shout out to him, and, like... <sighs> that's, that was a... That was a star. He's a star of change, man. He's he's done so much for so many artists, so many, so many artists, man. And he's just loved. Yeah, it's too bad that he's gone so soon. Rest yeah. in peace. Rest in peace, G. I love you, man. Don't worry, I got you. Like I said, I'm I'm gonna do great things around your name. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the headphones. <laughs> So, this is that, uh, I was playing it a minute ago in the background with no audio, but now I'm going to put it so they can check it out. And this is the place that you're saying the next day it was mm -hmm. gone. Yeah, it was gone. Tore down. Yep. Yeah. Turning off my phone I was leaving then I'm watching from above Right now I couldn't handle it Choking on my blood The last sound What the damage is I'll never speak a word From my mouth I think I'm bleeding out I think I'm bleeding out No longer can I breathe They say I'm gone Yeah I'm flown I'm giving up on me It was all that was shown Who is it? I can be It's someone I've never known Let's make it real, broken glass filled with rosé 
Too many pills, cigarettes in the ashtray A written letter, shell casings in the hallway I lost my mind and didn't think what would God say I can't sleep, I hear monsters calling my name Dragging me up my horrid fantasy Oh, what a dream, revealing what it seems And it feels like fairy tales, I'm tripping out just seeing things Is that you too singing? Dope visuals. Yeah, I came out clean. Yeah, and then that was that was the first one to start everything. That was the start of it. And, and it's got like I made a new YouTube account because I wanted everything more professional. Okay. But like it, it had like a good amount of views. Okay. So okay, you you, you kind of just re restarted it all. That's why yeah. it's it's only two months, but it should be like probably two or three years by now huh yeah like but, uh the other one like i had like a lot more subscribers in which i'm sorry y'all follow my other one my bad i'm not active on that i was gonna turn that more into like a adventure type thing but i wanted like my music like solely like through like that one account and then like my extracurricular stuff through the other one because like that's just what i've always used it for okay here's the do you want to preview this one too Oh, Bobby. Um, it's up to you. I don't. It's oh, can we do uh, uh, yeah, that one. This one. Yeah. Have you heard that one yet? Yeah, I listened to this one a minute ago. It was pretty good. Oh, good. DDI shot this too, man. Like this is the last video that we shot together. Oh, there you go. Please don't call me up. I am done. This is over with. We've been going up. We finna stop unless we holding it. We've been going. One with a chip on my shoulder. I put that motherfucker right there on my hand. Since a young and I was known to win. OG told me so again. Re up, need some more again. Hey, shout out Alias. That's my boy Koi. Shout out Viz. Can't wait till I post with my cousin. Fly coast is on you on so again. Bane's cold can't get warm again. My niggas want to go war again. You want problems? Come and see me then. Oh man, he was so happy to fly his drone and like get like the aerial shots and stuff. Yeah. write this verse when did you write this verse when you were in the studio with these guys or mm -hmm. yeah yeah like okay. the the song like the whole thing was done like in that in that studio and then like uh my boy three hound sound sam he makes it mastered it but like okay the beat like we were in the room when viz made the beat and like we were going through stuff we were like like first like he had like skipped over it like he had played a little bit and skipped over it, and me and court were like wait go back and it's like just because you are done it. Yeah, it's catchy. He's like, we was like, yeah, yeah, keep that in there, right? And like, I kind of call it uh, anime drill. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I see. What, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah. <laughs>
Oh, it's so hard to watch now. I used to watch it all the time. Dang. So who made this beat? You know that guy? Huh? So you work with the guy that made that beat? Uh-huh, yeah. That was a Viz. Viz? Okay. That's a dope beat. Yeah, he's made like a lot of like a lot of my um, music. Okay, nice. Solar Flare, all that stuff. Okay. Who's there? Uh, Let's see. Did you want to... I saw this. I don't know... Oh yeah, that was like uh, one of the live performances I had. At, How did that uh, come about? Oh, uh, uh, Rio Mark, man, yeah. So shout out to Mew, man. Mew is cool. He is dope. He is Austin, part of the culture. Um, I DM'd them and was like, "Hey, I'm me now." <laughs> <laughs> but I DM'd them and presented myself in a professional manner, of course. And um, they were down for us to perform, and they gave us a date. And um, I went and got the speakers. Uh, my homie Brad brought the drums. Ryan and Jay got the guitars. Ricky got his guitar and his bass. And like, my, I mean, they're just all talented here. They can do so many different things. Mm. And um, it was great. Shout out to Juice World. Rest in peace, Juice World. And um, this isn't even like the full show. There's actually like a couple songs missing. I had them took in like a separate thing. Okay. I just haven't put them out yet. Yeah, this is dope. Hey, thank you. It was it was a lot of fun, man. I love the Rio Mart, man. Like, uh, shout out to them. Do they do this often? Uh huh. Yeah, it's a grocery even, store, but okay. Where is this? It's in uh, it's in Austin, off of uh, <laughs> a street. I forget what street. But it's in it's in like the heart of Austin, like by like UT and stuff, yes. and um, they have like international things, like all kind of international like foods and snacks and cool stuff. But then they also have lights and stuff for you to perform, like a drum map. Huh, that's dope. Yeah, it's it's definitely a stamp. And they should. Uh, awesome I'm surprised definitely. they don't put this. Do they put this online? Uh, I know Instagram. I'm not sure of. Uh, okay. Anything else, but I know Instagram for sure because I see the reels and stuff. Okay. But yeah, I also been needing to like chop it up and send it in like separate things and stuff. There's so much I need to do, but I just been doing so much. And like, it's busy. That's yeah. what we talked about too before we started recording. Like it's a full time job. Mm -hmm. That's what if you I don't know if you wanna kinda speak on that a little bit. Uh like it's just becoming an artist is more than just like writing the raps and recording them. It's like you got to do the music video and then you have to schedule performances and that's a whole job and it's just yeah. like a lot to coordinate. So it's like, people are like, why haven't you put a clip up? It's like, dude, I'm doing so many other yeah. things. Like, <laughs> yeah, I man. Know like, <laughs> I know that's what, and I would like, love to, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's a, <clears throat> man, honestly, it, what it comes down to is planning and preparation. Yeah. Like, if I had the day you know what it comes down to mm -hmm. you have to love it so much that when you sit down at the end of the day to have free time instead of watching that basketball game or watching that netflix series or watching that sitcom in, in that hour or two instead of doing that you should be putting it back into your craft you have mm -hmm. to like love it that much and be like obsessed with it yeah you have to be like obsessed with yeah. it like you have to formulate your way of thinking back to that as the source yeah so, like, I had to think, like, this is the money that I need for it in order to progress in mm -hmm. this way. To get this, get that, mix and master, da 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 Video, okay, who, okay, when, yeah. okay, da 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 And then getting that set and up. it's coordinating with so many other people, yeah, too. Yeah, coordinating with them, too. And, like, nothing ever goes, like, according to plan. According to plan. But, that, but honestly, like, I, that's my element. Yeah, uh, you feel like you've got good at yeah, it. Yeah, like that's my that's my thing. Like I was even a part of this dance group called Transient back in college, and um, we did shows where like we didn't know what was gonna happen. It wasn't planned. Mm. You know, like a person would just start and we'd follow, and then when it's over, we'd all feel it, and at the same time we <laughs> clap, and it was over. Mm. But everything else in between was just natural. But somehow, we were all in tune to where our cadence with each other was. Okay, yeah. 
So like with that experience and knowing how to move like that, I've learned to do that in my mind and with how I move. So like that was really a big influence and like it, it helped a lot in like how I move now and the endeavors that I'm in and all the stuff that I have to balance like that right there. It's yeah. just whatever you can do at that moment in time. Mm. Well, uh, before we move on, like more like current news and like other stuff, is there anything else you wanted to say like mm. about being an artist or your experience? Man, or- I love it. Like, I feel like, hey, shout out to Black. I'm about to quote him. It's like, I've been more myself than I ever been. Mm. Like, how I am today, I wasn't always at this level of, um, you know, this way of thinking. Like, my openness, I wasn't always. For the most part, I was. But there are some things that were binded to me through emotion and experience to where I would block out the blessings that I could receive from learning from that experience mm-hmm. instead of just pushing it back. But um, I love being an artist. I've always felt an artist, like, even in high school, people would ask me, oh, what do you want to do in the future? It's like, oh, I want to help people, you know, maybe like something in like the medical field, but my heart's in the arts. I, al- I always said my heart's in the arts. Mm. People be like, what does that mean? I'd be like, I don't know. My heart's in the arts. Like, that's the stuff I really wanted to do. I took gymnastics as a kid. Um, most people wouldn't think I'd be able to do a flip, but yeah, I can do a flip. <laughs> and like, I can do a backflip off a trampoline. But, uh, <laughs> hey, a flip is a flip, nigga. Some niggas can't even flip shit. <laughs> but uh, I would just say, anyone out there, you know what I'm saying? Um, like you fell away towards something, and you feel a pull, go towards that pool, and see what's in that treasure chest that you open in the Legend of Zelda games, and pull out that treasure and present it to the world. Because we can never be who we are, even in this moment, in this second, ever again. The chance I am today, the fake smiles I am today, will be different than tomorrow and the next day. And in every minute and in every second, because the world is going and we're always changing. We're always evolving. Caterpillars, butterflies, you name it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, is there any? Yeah, any, some good weed. Is there anyone you want to shout out? Oh, shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! The show. There's so many. Okay, look, look, look. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Shout out my mom. Shout out my family. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my homies. Shout out anyone I've ever worked with. Shout out anyone that like knows me and. I was on a personal level. Even people who don't know me, shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for watching this. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know this will be put in. But, like, I'm trying not to mention names because I'm trying to include everybody within yeah, the things yeah. I'll say. Yeah, I know how it goes. But, like, yo, y'all know who y'all are straight up. We're about to put in a lot of work. We've been putting in a lot of work. But I know, like, for me, I'm trying to go, like, crazy and really just kind of, like, man, the only way I can explain it is, like, there is this like finishing move on Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Four, where like um, Minato is like going back and forth, and Naruto is going back and forth, but they're fighting this one dude together, and it turns into a ball, and then the ball comes down and tsh- explodes. Like that's what that's what I'm on, but like a lot of the people in Austin are on that stuff too. I just I just nice. love the community that we built. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it'd be good to see, like, I think we're seeing it just more and more people collab together and come together and work together, so, yeah, it's dope. There's a lot of talent in Austin, so, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, in the first part, we talked a lot about, like, all your stuff, but, like, what is your thoughts on, like, the rap industry and, like, music as a whole? Oh, man. Um, it's, it's always going to be here. It's always going to be prominent and... Uh, everyone's life and i feel like because a lot of people think that hip-hop is like falling off do you feel like that or not really it's like i just feel like to say like 
hip hop is falling off is a disservice to all the ones who have made so much change and impact mm. through hip hop and rap. And like, I just don't. Uh, I think I mean, maybe it like, will someday, but not yet. Yeah, it's like, you know, for example, oh, you know, they don't play basketball how they used to play in the 80s. Of course, nigga. It ain't the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course, the games have changed and the mechanics have changed and like, like yeah. that's what like time like goes and like there's different like uh how to explain it there's different ways to like go about it but it's like those kinds of things can never die yeah I right, it'll, it'll always be here it'll always be an influence and like just much more than like just a song you know it's a it's a part of people. It groups people together. Mm. And I, I just think that there's no way it can it can die. Like you cut off one head, four grow. Like and that's all it is. Just generations. Like now we we have generations of this genre. We have eras of this genre. Yeah. And even if you're gonna say that like hip hop, because I've also heard like people will say that okay, like even if you're mm -hmm. not saying it's dying, even if you're saying like another genre is like taking over and becoming bigger than hip-hop i would say not that's not even true yet even if it will be someday it's not now because like <clears throat> i don't know like this rap beef happened and like all of a sudden everyone's looking back at hip-hop and like there's no other i guess you could say that's like a positive and negative but like no like no one cares about other genres like that as much mm -hmm. like they do it yeah like, it's like i think the media puts out what they want to generate things from yeah with that being said, what do you what did you think about like the the Kendrick, Drake, Cole, now a lot of other people are getting involved, Ross and others? Um Have you listened to any of it or do you care about it or not really? No, I haven't tuned into it or anything like that because um there's just so many things in the background. Like there's so many possibilities. Like I don't know those people. I know mm. their artistry. And I know their work, but as far as like things in the background in which like I didn't see and didn't know, you know, I can't articulate and like I I honestly hate to see it going on. Like to be honest, I haven't participated in like this is the first time I ever even speaking about it because I haven't like participated in any because like some of my like only just stuff and having debates and stuff, but I've never like chimed in because like I'm just kind of like like hurt from it. I don't really. You think the beef's bad for? Well, it's like it's like this, man. Um, you know how they say all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Um, but like, I don't know what's at stake because if you're great, you're great. Like, period. Like, I think everyone is great if you made a contribution in any way possible. Like, you're great, and if you were able to influence a crowd for the better or a generation. You're great, you know, and no matter on how you do it, like, you're great, like, for just the simple fact of leading people to better themselves. And, like, so, like, when I, like, think about it, I just think about it from from an internal perspective because essentially, like, everything is all love at the end of the day. And, like, I don't, you know, and, like, I'm not really sure, like, what's going on because I'm still on like my journey and stuff and like um my influences are still the same because like i fuck with all three all three have had i mean everyone like they've all all the people listen they've all had an impact on my life i've been fans of every single one of them and uh and like that's like a, OG do you me. think it's necessarily a bad thing though because like people were saying back in the days with like jay-z and nas they like had the beef and then like afterwards they were like not maybe like right afterwards, but like down the road, they were like cool with each other. It never was like a serious like I'm gonna kill you, beef. It was more like I think I'm a way better rapper than you. Fuck your rap skills. Let's test it. And then like later on down the road, they were on s tracks together and they're cool now. And mm -hmm. like, I feel like that could be cool. That's healthy almost because it's like, healthy. It's like a healthy competition. Well, it, it, yeah, it, it like, as be. an MC, like yo, like yeah, yeah I'm the best. Like. Yeah, for sure. Like, you don't want to see everybody doing it all the time. Yeah, of course. But a little like, bit. Like, no, like, totally. Like, see, but, like, for me, like, that's a different world. Like, that's a different world for me. Like, I'm yeah. not I'm not trying to be 
the best. I'm not trying to no, I know. take all your fans. But understand now as fans, we can look at it but as, as like, fans like like yeah, like like like, you, like, like as, as a fan on, of hip hop, you know? do you are you cool with like J. Cole apologizing? Because like he put out a diss and then he like apologized for it. Like how honestly, did, I that, haven't like I haven't even like You haven't been keeping up with I it. haven't seen the apology. Like I've seen like some like like photos and stuff on the web. Oh, this happened, but I haven't like I haven't watched it. Um, I didn't even get to listen to the um, to the album or anything because mm. like everything just moves so fast now, you know. Yeah, and it's like it was out I'm, for like, like less than a week before he took it down. Yeah, and like um, for me, it's just uh, you know, I I kind of like not only like don't know what's going on, but. I'm just working because I know like my my purpose in this game is a lot different. But like as a whole, like from a fan standpoint, you know, it's kind of crazy. Like, like, wow, like I never knew like that this would happen. And like, these are all, these are all some pretty influential people. And like, they've yeah. done many great things and like, and like I would think, like oh man, I kind of want to like you know seeing like watch this and watch that, but my mind is already on so many different things. With okay, I've been meaning to play this chord yeah. for this song and like practice this for that, and I'm also learning. I'm trying to get vocal lessons and do these other things yeah. for myself, so I'm like tuned out. And then like like my message is a lot. Um, I'm not even going to say different because I believe the message at the end of the day is enlightenment. You know, people say things to influence others to enlighten and, you know, show like, hey, this is what happened. This is how I came. You can do it too. But like for me, like my goal is to find the ones that are having trouble climbing up, you know, like the ones who I'm trying to save people from themselves. Like that's mm -hmm. my, that's my goal. But I know to do that. I had to live life and learn from every single experience I have and with that control my emotions so that way I can help everyone else see theirs and take the emotional standpoint out of it to see like this is what it is that you want to learn. This is how you move to feel comfortable with yourself. Mm. And like and so like and I've been practicing like just like bringing the things like meant for me and uh using that to help others and convey that message so like and it's like i'm not saying like beefs are a negative thing i mean essentially you know it's uh it's a uh negative thing like oh you know there's this is going on and that's going on he said this and that said that and it's like like you know little skirmishes and like and like of course like a part of it could be like oh you know oh it's good for the culture but then there's it can only be so positive though yeah like all yeah. good jokes contain true shit you know yeah and uh that's a that's a cold quote and uh it's just i i think like i mean like like i said people live like like different lives you know and people have different ideals and they have different goals and they encounter different people and like they they all learn like lessons from each other and like different things but like for me it's just more i, I would say think of it as like color smoke and it being different colors mm. that's how i feel another sense, yeah <laughs> another side to it is like uh you might not be like up to date on how it affects the beef mm -hmm. per se but like there's been at least one probably two or three tracks that were released that were like ai made mm -hmm. oh yeah see yeah some of those have so it's just getting up. into like have you seen like what what is your opinion on like the ai music and that kind of thing it's just like it'll never be the original like yeah. it couldn't ever like yeah like I, I was like I've heard some of them, some of them I came up on like Facebook reels. And like immediately I was like, He ain't write this. And like it sounds like the voice, but But he didn't write this. And yeah. like I know I saw a bunch of these on YouTube like 
a year or six months ago and now I don't really see them recommended anymore but they would be like it would be like a Drake song but Kanye's voice mm -hmm. or like a Kanye song with Drake's voice yeah okay so they've been doing that and it'll, it would say on there like it would say what it was it would say like AI Drake whatever Kanye song like a, what's a what's a popular uh like uh can't tell me nothing by Drake oh, yeah or whatever whatever yeah by Kanye yeah yeah but then recently like a day or two ago there was mm -hmm. one that got put out but it was they were saying it was a Drake reference track by Yachty for jumbo shit uh jumbotron shit popping mm -hmm. but I think <clears throat> it was one of these AI ones where they just put Yachty's voice over Drake and mm -hmm. but they're trying to say like Yachty did it first and then Drake like used it but like it's one of these whole things where like it's just causing controversy if yeah like, exactly to get do you into. care if Drake uses a reference track or it's like how do you feel about shit like that? Um, it's like, cause like I think most fans don't give a fuck if Yachty, cause like we could pull it up now. I, I mean, everyone like but they like, all like if Yachty put out this jumbo shit tron, mm -hmm. jumbo tron shit popping, and then Drake could sing it just like a little bit better. Most and that's how it do goes, and most fans only ever hear the Drake version, and that's a little better than the Yachty version. Most fans don't give a fuck. I but mean, like, like, yeah, like, everyone has their different opinions, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone vibes at different frequencies, and, um, I just feel like... Would you do that, though? Like, like, like dude... If, let's say someone has some, like, a dope, uh, it's almost like if someone has a dope, uh, like, song, mm -hmm. uh, or, like, uh, a idea for a song or, like, a sample track, and then you take it and use it, would you do that? No. Nah. You wouldn't? Would you let, would you... Let someone use your track as a reference track. Yeah, you would. Yeah, that's like well, how you it, it, would. Well, okay, it. That's so like when you say that, are you saying like, like, bef like, in a collaborative perspective, or like they hadn't just showed it to me just to show it to me? I'm talking about like. You said you wouldn't, you wouldn't take someone else's and use it for yours, but you would, like. Take someone else's like like track. Like, like if they yeah, if they, if they said this is a, this is a re I I I'm shopping this around as like a reference track, and you used it, but like you could do it better, and it, you sounded better when you. Oh wrapped wait, it or do oh whatever. so you're saying like because that's what you're saying someone that like has a track and is like giving it to different artists to see what they can do on it. Yeah. Oh, like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause like, have you heard? Have you heard "Drunken Love" by Beyonce? Yeah. Uh, Do you know that name? was F Future? Did yeah, that. Future wrote it. Yeah. And then, and then, like, they just she basically just sang the same thing, but like, some would say I don't know. I kind of like his version, but some would say she did it like a little better. Um, it was uh, you know two what I'm different... saying? Like Drake has the weekend is that like Drake people do tracks and then Drake like basically re sings the same thing and uses it as his own. You know what I'm saying? That's like a reference track. Where like, would you use a reference track? Reference. You know what uh, I mean? It's basically yeah, like you're it just, just singing their same shit, but better. No, like you I, wouldn't do that. That's not a cover, right? Basically, but it's it's using it as your own. It's like if I came up with a song and then I felt like you would rap it way better because your voice is better and you uh -huh. can rap better, and I said, "Hey, I'll pay me a hundred bucks." And I'll let you use this as a reference track, and no one will ever know that I used it, or probably never know, and you'll just claim it as your own song. I tell that's them niggas, I tell them niggas, hey, written by da 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 da, because that's what Drake does. He'll put out mm -hmm. a song you'll never know, but it would be written and performed by like, like Party Next Door. Some of Drake's mm -hmm. biggest songs are probably Party Next Door songs, but he just sold them to Drake. You know what I mean? Hmm. That type I mean, of shit goes on. I feel like. Wherever you like fit in, like like that's the great thing about like music is that it can come in all forms and like in different formats. So like, what you is your? Have. So would you do that or like? Would you would you use a reference track if someone was? Would you use someone else's track? If they or, were or, like offering it to me, like to give to me or yeah. to, or if you heard it and they were, I don't know how it would even go. Really, that's the weird thing. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So like. But as a lot of the part of what makes you a dope artist and what makes artists dope is like they come up with their own shit. That's mm -hmm. the whole argument behind Drake having ghostwriters. This is almost like a I mean, another level of ghostwriting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like there's, you know, I, I love this like debate because people are always talking about oh ghostwriting and like performing. Duh, duh. Everyone is great and different things. And sometimes it could be all things at one time or they can do 
multiple different things like i know for me i can work with anyone i can work with anyone's style i can work with uh anyone's feedback i'm very good with criticism and like yeah i i know how to like move about the camera and i'll ask them like is there a certain way you want me to come in what do you envision you know what i'm saying and like yeah. and like say like hey i have this da, 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 da. because i i have been offered like one time by uh this guy on the internet he was like hey i have this song da, 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 but i feel like you could i like, perform it better you know do you want yeah. i could da, 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 da. and um i said no because like i'm not at the uh legality state to where like i can like constitute like and like i don't know this person like i'm going off i go off love and relationships yeah. like i don't really trust people online too much because you just never know you never know it. yeah mm -hmm. but that would be a reference track so yeah. but like if in so the you future, would put you would put yeah like it. like i would yeah. but i would give out the credit you right. know what i'm saying like this is written by duh duh like like yeah. of course like say like i had a really sad song and i imagine it in a high-pitched voice and i am not a soprano if I could give it to someone who has, so that you would voice. let them do it, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, and like it's beautiful because I know like some things, like even songs, like some like once I know because I, I see it in other producers and engineers and artists, there'll be a point where like sometimes you'll make something you don't know why you made it, and then it ends up wait, this person would sound great for it, or a person hears it and like, dude, this is da da, like really, I thought it was, I thought it was trash, yeah, and then it's like only oh, made for them because we're all like signals. And we all just get messages and we just all yeah help each other. So like like yeah, I would do that, but like I'd make sure uh you know, give credit where credit's due and everything. And um yeah, but like I know for me, like all my stuff like like I wrote. So Yeah, I think huh, it's interesting when you start all artists are and you know, whatever is like sounds the best, sounds the best, but it just gets I guess it become it gets into like ego and stuff when people start debating yeah. like who's the best of lyricists, mm -hmm. artists, all this, this and yeah, that. Then is, they, yeah, you know, it's, they start bantering, just yeah. talk, you know, a thing to talk about because like for some people like it's competition. Some people like see it as that way. You see it as like oh, and like essentially it's like oh, if you're like at the top during this time, like go and get it then because da 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 right but if you're i just feel like if you're a genuine person you don't have to worry about any of that because people are going to think of you always yeah and like just the fact of them thinking about you during those times is opportunity it does help for you to get that one fucking hit though like for a party mm -hmm. party next door i feel like is oh, a i good love example. party next door yo definitely he, one of my favorites for me recognize is like that one recognize hit. yes oh my recognize is crazy but it's like how many other hits does he have that drake like that he he came up with and that drake like oh honestly, I, and it's I mean, all like yeah i know for me but i don't it, even care it's, if it's great it's great it's like, great it's great <laughs> but it takes away from like what we could attribute to his greatness but i mean that was you know, his decision but, to like, make though huh that was his decision to make yeah yeah like he if he didn't want to he wouldn't like that's true yeah so like it's and, interesting like, though yeah, so like that's kind of like how I see it. Like people, people doing what they feel like, especially at that moment in time, mm -hmm. and like it's always for a reason. And like anything could happen, and like we have emotions and stuff. So like, there's so many things that could influence different decisions, and we may not make all the right decisions. But um, I feel like, like for example, if I had like a super hit song, and it was just like, say. I was just a feature on that song. Woo, great! It don't even matter. I'm on a song that's a hit, mm. and like, that's just like one song. But even if it's not a hit, like, like I'm just happy that I'm able to be on a song and be able to be on more songs and just yeah elevate. Like that's like that's enough for me. And um, but for like some people, like there's some people like they're they're doing this to prove things to themselves. They work so hard because they're proving to themselves that I am this and I am that. Right. I, when I hear people in interviews that have like longevity in the, like the rap game, mm -hmm. they talk, they talk like that. Like, yeah, I'm, I do this for like the love of it. And just cause I want to get on more songs and like make dope, more dope stuff and like build relationships and like, so yeah, yeah that's like, it's, it's beautiful, man. Like, yeah. But yeah, that's how I, that's how I see it. That's crazy. Cause like, 
I, I never like I never like spoke about any of that. I didn't even know how I was gonna respond because I never like thought to even like. I just felt like pain. Like I just I just thought that well, if it was like, you know, like real and stuff, which I'm not like, discombobulating like, I'm not debunking anything. You know, it's just I truly don't know like, I like, yeah I'm in Austin. There might be traffic today. These niggas can't drive out here bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like when it comes to like the music creativity i don't want that to be like like a like a like an influence and then like my like rap started to sound out like that and it's only because i'm finding my originality but i actually got it now like all the stuff i have like that i released like so far like y'all that was old that was old like <laughs> <laughs> Like 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 a year, like a year and plus, a year plus, year plus to yeah. two, you know what I'm saying? And like all this news, wow, I'm getting deja vu right it, now. It sounds so cliche too, but like mm -hmm. you you, as an artist, you put out some work, especially your very first shit, mm -hmm. and then you look back after six months or a year, and you put out more stuff, and you're like, man, the first shit I kind of hate. Like your very very beginning shit, and you're like, I wish I would have never done it because now look where I am. But it's like. If you never pick up a basketball and dribble the first ugly dribbles, you never get to where you're dribbling a little better. True. And it sounds so cliche and so stupid, but it's like there's so many little things you learn that get to where you get to be good mm -hmm. that because you think, well, it's just because I'm like older now and smarter now and like I would have been this much better no matter what. It's like, no, nah, you you wouldn't yeah. have. You had to fucking suck a little bit. Had to. You had yep, to. Like so or you know, you know what I mean. You uh -huh, had to go through yeah, the rough you times. You had to get and, better. Yeah. yeah. Like um, if it like for me like my first songs that I made like if it wasn't for those songs like I wouldn't be where I am. Yeah. And like everything like in the song that we captured was a true emotion and feeling and everything from that timeline from that moment from that second that hour that day with the people like it was yeah it was just more than just oh a song that i put out it was yo this is my chidori <laughs> feel it what is that chidori it's a uh, like it's a uh, let's see japanese for uh a thousand birds so it's like so it's kakashi's signature uh, finishing move, his signature secret technique. Oh, okay. So, but there's multiple names for it. There's a Rakiri, but he taught Sasuke the Chidori. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how I see it as. Mm. One of my influences, too, Kakashi Hadake. And it's from, like, you know Naruto, right? Uh-uh. Oh, okay. I've heard of, uh, like, bro, you gotta I've heard anime, it mentioned, bro. like, Oh, you would, you would get lot. into that. Yeah. You, you would get into that. No, I've, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest animes I've ever heard, of, like, mentioned. Other, the, other than Dragon Ball Z, which I've seen quite a bit of. But, like, Naruto is, like... Oh, yeah, I fuck with Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Heavy. Heavy. Well, Who's your favorite character? Uh... I haven't watched it like all the way through enough to really, really know, but I'd say just off of like basic shit, probably Vegeta. Vegeta? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who do you fuck with? Man, um, actually, so like, that's crazy. So Vegeta is my number one character. He was my first uh, favorite, right? So it was him. And then, like, I want to say when I was about 12, it was Gohan. Okay. Right? And then. Uh, the man I am today, I relate with Trunks. Okay. So, like, I think Trunks is... Uh, so, like, looking back, and, like, I see how I relate to the others, but Trunks from the get-go is always how, like, yeah. my personality was and stuff. Just, like, ready for whatever because whatever is coming anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, shit, is there anything else you want to talk about or name drop or shout out or anything before we get out of here? Shit. Let's see. All right, we got a lot of got a lot of shout outs. It's going to go down the list. All right. Shout out. P.I. Viz. Koi. Alias. You know what I mean? Shout out Underground Voices. You know, Space Goons, Trey Six, Ryan Dove, Kai. You feel me? Good shout out, Clutter. Shout out, motherfucking NSF. Who? Shout out, motherfucking 
Dice Spitz. Shout out motherfucking Maddie and the Dead Names, who I haven't met yet, but I've heard some of their music and okay. like I'm trying to catch a show. Um, shout out Ash and the Endings, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Whisk. Um, man, there's like so many. Shout out Ryan, shout out Brad, shout out Jay Satellite, you feel me? Let's see. Shout out Three Hound Sound. Shout out my dog, Eight. Yeah, on me. Um, shout out Joey. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Joey Flex. Hey, Joey Flex. Joey Flex. So the best. Um, man, there's like so many people. Uh, oh, shit. Shout out Isis. Shout out Music Makers. Shout out um, Sky Unknown. Master photographer, shout out Tony Poses, master photographer, shout out Eight Day, you feel me? Shout out Mohawk, shout out 13th Floor, you feel me? Shout out Swan Dive, shout out Chess Club, shout out Cheer Ups. What um, is Chess Club, real quick? Oh, Chess Club, it's a um, <coughs> it's a bar, but they also okay. have like rock shows. It's pretty dope. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's nice. um, it's right across the street from the 13th floor okay yeah oh yeah and also y'all um got some shows coming up i have a show april 26th at vaquero to quero follow me on instagram at f-a-k-3-5-m-i-l-e-s i also have a show on the 27th of april at voodoo donuts in austin texas the sixth street location pull up you know what i'm saying and um Those dates and his social media stuff will be in the description. The timestamps are always in the description. Oh, bet. Okay, so, awesome. Then I'll just tell you the dates and shit. So I don't yeah, have to. Yeah, we'll put that all in the description. For yeah. Y'all. Um, but yeah, man. Hey, thank you for having me, man. This is so dope, man. Really needed this, man. It's been uh, in the hell of a week, but I appreciate you having me on here. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about your homie. That's, that's, it's always terrible when anybody gets like taking away is too soon but especially someone that's like doing good showing love a good yeah. person and like you know just like talented and and showing love Everybody. and doing the right shit so i i hate to hear it but at least he like had a good impact and we have shit to remember him by and like mm -hmm. he left his his mark on you and others i'm sure so yeah. you know shout out to him and rest in peace and uh rest in peace ddi love man i got you love yeah bro um but other than that this was a dope ass episode i uh we loved having you and we can't wait to have you back you know soon get your opinion on things that are going on and what you got going on and updates yeah, and stuff hell yeah i got some man new music on the way y'all but i mean don't every nigga say that new music yeah, on the yeah. way yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything to look out for like like that you're excited that you're like trying something new with visual or the, man, like a new like, sound you're trying musically or is, what's what's the bro, newest little so thing that you're things. trying oh my gosh like uh I give us one little anything. give us any okay all right let's see i know you said the mask thing is something that you fuck with heavy because you're homie what else is something like that that is new that you're it's... well i i can i can tell you this i can tell you this and every form of art that's about to come out is going to be even crazier than what I've had previously. Because what I had previously was a different side of me. And you just feel more in tune now. Yeah, I feel way more in tune. Like, my soul is, well, as calm as it can be right now. But I know, like, I see everything. I see it clearly. I, I see the steps. And I see to build a house, it starts brick by brick here and there. Like all the people, like since being an artist, all the people I've met, like I've I've met them also again, like later on, and we're like in the same stages, and we just all collaborate. And that's dope. I I love it. It's part of such a great community. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out Mission Control. Yeah, you know I mean. Underground voices, make sure I say that, you know, the voice there, yo, yo, yo. Um, and 
Yeah, shout out Kelly Kyrie. Malik. Sorry, I got so many people. No, it's all good. <laughs> I'm just bringing it in and there and like, if yo. If half of those people watch this, we are going to be doing fucking amazing. <laughs> yo, um, shit. Mike, Black Swan, shout out. Yeah, shout out Taylor Fields, Gully Steez. Yes, sir. Del K, Johnny Parker. Johnny Park. Yeah, my bad. Not Parker. <laughs> um... But yeah, man. Uh, everything, everything's gonna be cool, man. And we definitely gotta do some shit too. But like, Hell oh yeah. yeah, for it, for like the question you asked. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, what's what's the biggest like? What's the biggest thing that's coming up? Oh. So for most of my music, y'all have seen the result of the terrors that I've experienced and the emotions behind it. But now, you'll see something brighter than what it was before. And it's completely different. And may even be unsettling. Nah, I think that's dope. <clears throat> I think people are ready for like positive and like cool shit, like uplifting and like positive vibe type shit, you know? Yeah. I think people are ready for it, so that's dope. Um I hope so. I mean I still got, you know, everything else, but like but like that that still like that was the uh, the shadow. Yeah. Like I was showing the shadow <clears throat> side and I was showing the light from the shadow side. But now I can reverse it. That's dope. Well, shit, this is a dope-ass interview. Can't wait to do it again. Hell yeah. <laughs> shit, uh, Where There's Smoke, episode 16. Shit, we out. Or this your resting place, we all walk above our graves and don't faze me no more. Ain't no use to save the day, saving shit such a bore.